Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples. About that day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And then they knew nothing, until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not let his house let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. This is the last time that you'll be listening to me as reader, as my licence ends next week. It's been a great honour serving you in this way, and I greatly appreciate all the support that I've been given if anybody would like to train and take over my role, I'm sure that they would get the support that I have had. Advent is the time of preparation for the coming of Jesus. A newborn baby born in the back streets of a small town in Israel. In the next few weeks, as part of this preparation, we will be thinking about some of the prophets of the Old Testament, beginning this week with Micah, who lived over 2,600 years ago in a world that actually was not that much different from our own. It was a time in Jerusalem when some Jews were very rich, from very questionable activities. Not quite the city of London, but not that far from it. And the rich were too wound up in their own lives to consider those less fortunate, buying up the land of the less fortunate underneath them. And if the poor complained and the face of the courts or the priests then simply those priests and courts were bought off. Micah had seen this as he was brought up and he'd also seen the devastation that was caused by the, Assyri the Assyrians in the northern territory of Israel and its capital Samaria. And he was very concerned that in the southern territory of Judea if it didn't turn back to God, then a similar fate was going to befall them. God's standards of behaviour, treating everybody fairly, showing concern beyond the individual's needs, could save them. In this situation, he looked to a time when someone from the great house of David could restore the nation. And he associated this with that little town in Bethlehem, David's city, just outside Jerusalem. Some six centuries later, when Jesus was born, this prophecy was to be quoted to the wise men from the East who were seeking the site where the newborn Jesus was, it was born 
and so that they could go and visit him. I think there can be nobody here who has not heard about the rule of life from the Bishop of Liverpool. Pray, read, learn, tell, serve and give. But it's also important to understand why this matters. After these actions, the rule says we're asking God for a bigger church to make a bigger difference, more people knowing Jesus, more justice in the world. Micah was saying exactly the same thing. Getting people to turn back to God, getting them to understand what God wanted of them and bringing greater justice in the world. He said, He has showed you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to humbly walk with your God. We live in a world which is increasingly less influenced by those of faith, where money and power dictate the life we are able to lead, and where, as a result, actions become increasingly militant. Justice is about listening to those in need in the light of being followers of Jesus. Mercy is about losing face in the world's eyes as God's children seek to reconcile increasingly hard and extreme views. And walking humbly with our God is seeking the call of the Holy Spirit in our prayer, learning, reading, and in our telling, serving, and giving. As we approach Christmas, can we prepare ourselves for this Advent to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God? If so, then we can be part of the continuing incarnation of God in our century, so that those who have not heard of Jesus, who have not yet responded to his call, can join us in making this diocese and this country closer to the kingdom of God. Amen.